It was two days before Christmas on the island of Sodor, and all around the blessing of the winter atmosphere held strong in the boilers of the engines. Despite the ice-cold layers of snow on the ground, many of the engines felt hot and bothered. After all, it was one of the busiest times for the railway. A little green engine sat shivering in the yards. The snow that fell chilled his axles, and he was wondering how he could keep himself warm. He was suddenly interrupted. Come on, Percy. You can't be daydreaming when there's work to be done. Daydreaming? I'll have you know, this is the first time I've stopped all day. I'm tired out, you know. Backwards and forwards all the time, and not a moment to stop and take a break. The dock was in a great mess today, and Oliver was nowhere to be seen. He was supposed to help me shunt the trucks about. Well, he probably left you to work alone, Percy. He's not the friendliest of engines at times, and trust me, I know that. Yeah, and that definitely made me feel better. Percy felt depressed, thinking he had fallen for Oliver's tricks again. Tell you what, Percy. You stay here and have a rest, and I'll take your next job. Oh, that'd be a huge help. It's just more shunting in the yards this time. It shouldn't take long. Duck whistled cheerfully and puffed off. Oh, and watch out for those tender engine twits. I have a good mind to say they won't be in a good mood today. Percy wasn't the only engine taking a rest from work. At the yards, the three tender engines sat impatiently, waiting for Percy to shunt their trains. Where's Percy? He's supposed to fetch our coaches. He should be here by now. Percy needs to look up to us bigger engines and show us more respect. Good morning, you three. Percy's tied out, so he's taking a rest. I am here to cover for him. Disgraceful. Disgusting. Despicable. Percy's taking a rest. Whatever for, he's done no work to be given sympathy for. We get no rest. Despicable. Calm down. You three seem to have lost your spirit, you know. Nonsense. We don't like having to wait for our trains to be shunted on any day, any season. Today is no exception. Well, if you wanted to get your trains marshalled early, you could always shunt your own trains, you know. Shunt? What call is that tank engine on? Tender and shunting was probably a common thing on the Western Railway. Poor things. Just then, Emily rolled over the overpass, rumbling loose a pile of snow resting upon it, which fell down upon the blue engine underneath. That's it, this cold weather is driving me insane. Naturally being a shunter himself, Duck easily found the trucks and coaches, and carefully shifted them over to where their engines were waiting impatiently. On his departure from the platform, Gordon made sure to whoosh a cloud of steam towards Duck, hissing loudly. Now that was not the Great Western way of handling things, he muttered, then headed back to the yards where he was rejoined by Percy to get the extra load of Christmas goods shunted and ready to leave. The two tank engines were a great pair when it came to shunting, but Gordon, Henry and James weren't so keen on the idea. Whenever they passed by, it seemed like Duck always had some criticism to give to the trio, whether it be helpful or just an annoyance. You know, on the Great Western Railway, we used shunter's trucks. Trucks that were always coupled up to the shunter and carried workmen's tools and such. Shunter's trucks? What a waste of metal. Don't you think we've got enough trucks on this island to look after? They come in use. Of course, you might know that if you ever did shunting. Which reminds me, I'd watch out for those trucks if I were you. Watch out for trucks? Bah! Trucks don't tell me what to do, thank you very much. And neither do you. Ah! Oh. Those trucks. Right. Well, I'll be off then. <laughs> A 
As the time changed from a busy afternoon into a tranquil and calm evening, Duck rode warily back to the sheds after a long day of work. It didn't take long before the engines were tucked up peacefully for the night, and dozing happily off to sleep. All was silent, not a noise to be heard for miles around. Suddenly, Duck heard a rumbling noise. He listened closer to the sound of nearing footsteps. Then the sound stopped, replaced by a faint whispering. But Duck couldn't place where it was coming from. Who's there? He spoke into the darkness, but there was no reply. A torchlight flickered around, and Duck looked to his side as the man with the torch stood by his buffer and stared at the engine. He didn't look like a railway worker to Duck, and it was only at that moment that he realised what was happening. Vandals! He shouted and awoke the rest of the sheds. The sound shocked the group of thieves, and the other engines for that matter, as they burst out of their sleep to the sight before them. Everything seemed to happen at once. The people beside Duck climbed up to his footplate, then onto his boiler, where they began hitting something. Ouch, that hurt! Get off me, you menaces! What do you think you're doing? Duck, what's going on? These good-for-nothings are trying to vandalize me! Before anyone could do anything, the group cut and soared into something upon Duck's boiler. There was a loud metal clang. Then they clambered down and hurried off behind the sheds. There was silence for a moment broken by the sound of a signalman running up to the sheds. What on earth is going on here? Vandal, sir. They stole my whistle. The other engines looked over in pity at the Great Western engine. Even Gordon, Henry and James were sorrowful. The signalman alerted the local police station, and soon the whole yard was awake whilst the officers took down witness notes and accounts. And your name is? Montague, sir, but I'm usually called Duck. And you are the victim? Right. Can you explain to me what happened? Yes, sir. I was sitting here sound asleep when a group of thieves came round from the back of the sheds. I didn't get to look at all of them, just one. So Duck explained his encounter with the metal thieves. Next morning, everything was back to normal, and the Fat Controller came to the sheds to speak to Duck. Please, sir, have the police found my whistle yet? I'm sorry, Duck, but there isn't a trace of it. All we know is a group of people were seen driving off in a red lorry late last night. I'm afraid they'll just have to stay here until we can find it. You can't work on my railway if you've not got a whistle. Railway board orders. Duck was very dismayed, and didn't feel any better as the engines left the sheds for work. Well, 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 that certainly wasn't the great western way of handling things, was it? <laughs> All day, Duck sat there in the cold breeze, the snow building up on his boiler and along his running board, upon his camp roof where his whistle once stood. Afternoon, Duck. Feeling any better? Not really, Edward. It's not a nice feeling to be out of service on Christmas Eve, not being able to help out with all the work. I know what you mean, but guess what? The Fat Controllers asked me to shunt you to the station. You'll be able to see more then, and you can talk to the passengers too. There you go, Duck. I'd best be off. There's a sent a special train due to leave soon with my name on it. Thank you, Edward. Good luck. Edward was right. The station was simply bustling with life, and it was hard for Duck to feel alone now. <laughs> Presently, there was a distinct honking sound, and Duck looked round to see Bertie the bus drive cautiously up the station car park. Morning, Duck. A strange sight to see you park tip here on Christmas Eve. Hello, Bertie. Yes, I've been put out of traffic today. Some thief stole my whistle, and I can't go out without it. Although, I do wish I could. Cheer up. It's nearly Christmas. I'm sure you'll get your whistle back in the end. Tell you what, I'll keep an eye out for those thieves. They can't have gone far in this weather. Kind of from you, Bertie. 
But I don't see how you could help. The last passenger boarded Bertie, then he headed off down the road once more. Don't worry, Doc. I'll see what I can do. You just keep your spirits high and enjoy the festivities. Cheerio! <laughs> So long. In all fairness, Bertie too didn't think he'd be able to find Duck's whistle, but he was willing to try for a friend, especially given that it was Christmas Eve. He drove down the country roads and into the villages, through festively decorated towns and over level crossings. But it was no use. No matter where he went, it seemed there was no way Duck was getting back on track any time soon. He had asked his driver if they could take the long way round, which ran alongside the railway for some while. Driving down the unlit lanes with snow howling round like a blizzard was not an easy task, and Bertie was focusing carefully on the black ice road ahead of him. Then, Bertie saw an eerie glow shining ahead of him. He moved cautiously forward, revealing the shape of a small red lorry, parked up by the side of the track. Then he saw something very strange, a small group of men were shoveling something in the snow. One of them had a metal detector. Suddenly it all came clear to Bertie what they were doing. Driver, it's the thieves, the ones who stole Duck's whistle. Quick, let's get them. Bertie revved his engine and the thieves looked up in horror. They snatched the buried whistle and jumped into the lorry. Bertie tried to block the road to stop them, but his wheels only spun as the lorry shot past them into the dark of the night. For a moment, all seemed hopeless. Oh, bother Bertie. It's too late. We can't catch them now. No! Yes, we can. Follow their tire tracks. They'll be fresh in the new layer of snow. What a clever bush you are. Come on, let's go. The chase was on. Bertie raced along the road. I'll catch that lorry or burst. He roared in a determined shout. At last, the bus caught up with the lorry. Stop! Stop! As he gained his way closer, the lorry suddenly swerved sideways, nearly knocking Bertie off the road. After that failed attempt, they tried again, unable to see the thin layer of black ice coating the tarmac. Bertie braked to a halt and watched helplessly as the red lorry plunged into the pond below. There was a loud cracking sound, and everyone present suddenly realised that the pond had in fact frozen in a thick layer of ice. Wasting no time, Bertie's driver drove him round to where the ground was more level with the water. Attaching a tow cable, both lorry and bus were now connected. Revving his engine to full power, the old-fashioned bus managed to drag the half-sunken lorry back to firm ground, much to the relief of everyone. Still in shock and quite shaken up, the men inside the lorry had decided it best to just turn themselves in to the confident little bus, and the police were soon called to the scene to take them away. Bertie was thanked for his heroic efforts, and told the policeman how it all happened whilst his driver stowed a strange-shaped package on board. A glisten of glorious sunshine shone a golden gleam down upon Tidmouth Sheds, where Duck had been re-shunted by Bear early that morning to celebrate the arrival of Christmas Day. The engines of the North Western Railway were holding their own little party, but Duck was still upset, and remained quiet whilst the other engines talked loudly around him. Then Gordon spoke to him. Duck, I'm sorry for teasing you. 
I know that wasn't the great western way for a mature engine like me to handle things, but um, I am sorry now. Please, will you accept my apology? The Tidmouth tank engines were surprised. It wasn't every day that Gordon acted in such a way. Gordon, acting kind, never will I see the day. Are you sure your smoke box is screwed on right? No, you lot. Gordon's fine. He's just getting the spirit of Christmas, I think. He's finally doing things the great western way, aren't you, Gordon? I'll check your builder's plates again, and make sure you won't build a Swindon like me. Swindon? Pa, what a load of rubbish. Doncaster's the place, my dear engine. Where the real stars were built. Flying Scotsman, Mallard, well me of course. Green Arrow, the Stirlings, Ivat Atlantics, the list could go on forever. Hey, on. What's this? Bertie? What are you doing here? I thought buses didn't run on Christmas Day. They don't. I've come here specially. Why? Didn't you hear the news? I've got a Christmas present for Duck. A present? For me? Was it for Bertie? I've not done anything to deserve a present. You certainly deserve this one, but you never deserved ever taken from you in the first place. There you go, Duck. Merry Christmas. Uh, get ready for something predictable. His driver stepped down to present the gift. Duck was so surprised he nearly shouted out with glee. Well, bless my pannier tank. My whistle! You found it! How on earth did you... Bertie, you brilliant nil bus, where did you get this from? That's a long story. But long story short, those stratted thieves have been caught, and your whistle is back with you where it belongs. Look, I even went into the works and got it repaired and polished for you. It's good as new. I can't thank you enough. You've just given me the ticket I need to get moving under my own steam again. I'll never doubt the abilities of a bus again. Told you! Completely predictable. I don't know why I bother listening to all this drama. It's like I have a sense of knowing what's about to happen and... <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Disgusting. And a Merry Christmas to you too. All the engines laughed and Duck was the happiest of all.